Some capsulars claim that the UCM is dishonorable and unfair. Jam those ones first and kill them last. When thinking on Agrestas, most think about the powerful drone hulls or the fact that their insignia is badass. But most don't know more than this, and it's a shame. The Agrestas are a cool bunch, despite, you know, the black market dealings, trafficking, and all the murder. In today's video, we're going to go over the notable history of the Agrestas and the two founding figures that have made Agrestas what it is today. First, we're going to talk about Jirai Fatal Leotanen, the more brawn of the two. Not to say that Fatal was them what did right enough, as he was once a captain in the Kaldari Navy 37th Octopus Squadron, where he was known for being a capable and charismatic leader, for you to one day take a possession of further power. However, this never came to be, as due to his more negative traits, that being both greedy as well as being rather vain. Um, great traits right now for an expired pirate um, caused him to not get a promotion. This would have uh, amount to be the first ignition to his uh, career towards piracy. The second of the pair, Korko the rabbit Kusakami, was quite an opposite to his friend Fatal. That him being more introverted as well as being more of a thinker. As has been said that he had an exquisite mind both creating the ship's grossest fly as well as coming up with some of the rather fruitful plans for the Gorsa's future endeavours. Not to say the rabbit won't get his hands dirty if required. The rabbit, too, was once part of the, uh, the navy, however, after being blamed for a fatal crash landing resulting in many casualties, himself as well as Fatal ended up um, fleeing the navy in two uh, Condor class vessels that they acquired, um, heading towards uh, pirate infested uh, waters between Kaldar and Galantis space. Venal, where the were soon to be formed later. YC101. This is here of the greatest heist the Grosses end up doing, and it's the main event that shot Grosses to public fame, sealing them as one of the most badass pirate bands in New Eden. The heist was planned as to kidnap an ambassador and exchange him for a sizable ransom. This is no difficult feat for a competent pirate uh, corporation, however it was, uh, what made this feat notable was how it was orchestrated. The plan, most likely a uh, mastermind by the rabbit, was to lean on the ambassador's love for gambling, Fatal disguised, lost his ship purposely in a stake to the ambassador. The ship was rigged with sleeping gas, and when the unsuspecting ambassador and his entourage entered, the canisters popped, making short work to knock out all resistance from their new cargo. The duo made off of ease, only to be followed by a, uh, a search by the Glanty police to no avail. The Grisses ended up exchanging the ambassador for a large sum of uncut diamonds provided by the ambassador's father. Nothing was said about the bodyguards of the ambassador, so I believe they were most likely disposed of, as it would have been of very little value to the Gristas. The second notable event in the Gristas history would be how they came access to the Raven Blueprints. In short, this was done by Fatal giving up one of his commanders for access to the Blueprints. This was done in part to the commander in question not responding to an order. However, let's get into more detail on the subject. First, we need to talk about a fellow named Otro. After his father was caught selling drugs to an Ishikun executive, to note, um, he was trying to make money for the betterment of his son's life, as they were in poverty at the time, um, was uh, shot. The Gristers outstretched a hand towards Otro and gave him an end to the Gristers, which he ended up accepting. However, after some time, he ended up drifting apart from the Gristers in pursuit of avenging his father. This ended up being a problem for one of the Garista commanders, named Ben, who at the time was working with a corrupt Ishikon CEO, Les Akelan. Um, after some time uh, passed for Otro, he ended up reuniting with his long-lost sister, Mila, and with her help and associates, they ended up being able to blackmail Ralarashi Okibo, a financial officer for Ishikon. The reason for doing so was in hopes of getting access to the new battleship blueprint. After a board meeting where R Ralashi unveiled the raven, it was sent into an unregulated space where he came into attack from aggressive forces. Otro used this as a bargaining chip at the time, as Bane was attacking his sister and associates and Otro had access to the blueprints. His conditions were fatal where he would give up the blueprints and Bane, and Bane would cease at his attacks. Fatal agreed, but Bane refused and along with it Fatal abandoned him for the blueprints. After this event, Otro and his sister Mila both became CEO and CFO of Ishikon, making for valuable allies in the future. The third most prominent event to be followed Gristas would be the Cerulear event, 
an event that would lead to a very harsh reality check for the Gristas, resulting in the loss of one of their great leaders as well as taking numerous casualties. The plan was to first drive away a lot of the funding and security of the project. This was done by Fatal ordering one of his spies to poison personal aid to the top, two top scientists, as well as Otro, who at the time was the CEO of Ishkun, had uh, blueprints and equipment stolen to further stir anxiety in investors and staff. The plan succeeded, and the, now the crew working on the project were a minimum, as well as Empires pulling back their police forces, making it an easy place for a future heist. An initial assault, despite the lack of faction police, the operation ended up leaking two caps layers and making it a nightmare for the Grista forces. Although heavily damaging the station, the Gristas made a tactical retreat, only to return and in the process gain access to the facility with ease, as Fatal Spy was still operational. The rabbit entered and had taken one of the head scientists hostage. The second was led off station. The rabbit ended up escaping with the second also. As the Gristas made their getaway, with heavy casualties, they would take, also take another massive hit as Fatal ended up being podkilled in a low-quality clone, resulting in lower motor functions, as well as severe memory loss. As ruthless as ever in fashion, the Gristas had no use for Fatal and ended up exiling him from the, the band. As for the hostages, they were sold to the highest bidder, that being the Federation. Although in transit, the two scientists end up being lost due to some problem with identity theft, and later met their demise on a random slave colony. Alright, now that we've got the main history tidbits out of the way, let's get to know the Gristas as more of an organisation. As far as the entities that like the Gristas, Blood Raiders, for whatever reason, love the Gristas, and Saturn Nation like them. Both Glad and Mimitar stay neutral towards the Gristas, as well as the Job and Or. As for the faction that dislike the Gristas, Kildari hate them, most likely due to their m many dealings with the group. The Mar also dislike them. Fucker Tribe shares a distaste for them as they share the same marketplace, that being the Grey Market, and competition being fierce between the two. Mortal's Legion has a rivalry with the Grisses for a long time, that being due to part both as both uh, entities seem to be militant in structure, as well as both being Kaldari in origin. Seeing themselves as more of a proud and honourable party compared to that of the Grisses, who are few to take on any form of mercenary work. Also to add, the Sister of Eve... Uh, Enterbus and the society share a slight distaste for the band. The Gristas share a mutual liking to the Blood Raiders as well as Brent's corporation. The Galanti, Memtar, and Galanti are all seen to be neutral, and dealings with these factions is on the table. However, the Gristas don't like to deal with the Amar and their ilk, as they seem to be in distrust them on grounds of their use of slavery. Which is kind of hypocritical, as the Gristas have been known to take on jobs involving people trapping, but hey ho. Now let's go on to the ships the Grisses are more well known for. All hulls appear to be Kaldari Navy in design, and Rab has argued that it was in fact the Kaldari Navy that stole the design of the Rattlesnake for the Scorpion, however it has not been proven. The first of the hulls to be produced was the Gila, the rabbit basing off of the Moa hull sacrificing speed and cargo capacity in favour of a bulkier hull. He stripped the gunnery platform and exchanged it for that of missiles as well as adding powerful drone support. The results of these mods was a lower than normal capacitor pool. However, the rabbit was uh, fine with this, as he was happy that the capitalist missiles would offset this problem. The worm quickly followed, and then his greatest creation to date, the rattlesnake, a hull to make the grisses both feared and respected. Uh, the rabbit also ended up um, creating a rookish corvette, um, the typhon, to no not of course leave out his rookies. To add, the Rapid also go on to creating uh, three capital class uh, ships. The Kerman, a Dreadnought, a Loggerhead, the Force Auxiliary, and the Komono, a Gressa Titan. I may have forgotten that these existed, and this is like a very quick edit. We'll go more over the detail of these and uh, yeah, near the end of the video. As it stands now, the Gressas are led by the Rapid, along with its 14 officers. At time of rightness, it seems the Gressas are eerily quiet. Are unyielding. However, their latest exploits could give us an idea on to what their future plans would be. Currently, it seems that they could be researching something. Perhaps this was uh, what went the creation of those capitals, but it could also be something else. The evidence for this would be the fact that the Grisses have been buying covert research tools, as well as taking over other pirate-owned facilities. This, on top of more black and market dealings than normal, 
leads to an interesting question bobbing up as to what it is that aggressors could be researching or producing. Will there be more like new tech or like perhaps like new hulls? But um, this is all just speculation as to what they could be producing and what they could be up to. Okay, onto those capitals. I couldn't find much lore surrounding these, but there's some awesome flavor text involved in them. That gives us more of an idea of what the character, the, uh, the rabbit, is. Um, so, first and foremost, this is a loggerhead. Technology is a wonderful thing, and once you embrace it, you don't look back. Take me. I'm mocked up to the eyeballs. That speech impediment I used to have? Neurovocal implant took care of that. I tried working on it, but didn't have the time. Too busy with the reconstruction, new technologies, planning, mega heist, and all that rest of it. What? Oh yeah, listen, s see what I mean? I can edit it back in any time I like. It's my party piece. When I have drinks with the o OG, reminds them of the old days. But anyway, back to technology. We live for it. We're at the cutting edge and we make it ourselves. We don't nick it, like the angels. What? Fatal? You're asking about that? Okay, look, that's enough. Interview's over. Uh, an interview from Red Glorax of the Scopes Galactic Hour. Now onto the kimono. We're in Night Mega now. Have been for a long time and we're necessary for the entire setup. McLaren's state was getting stale. Hidebound. All that hey I bullshit. Think the big eight give a feed was far for that? That's all the prop mind flood. Strictly for the dopes. The pros looking for an excuse not to stick it to Big Daddy Mega. And the eggers who spout. Glory to the state. They're the worst. All the power and how they bow down before Mother State. And Daddy Mega? Sickening. What? Ah yeah, ninth mega? What do I mean? Look, the big eight, right? They carve up the state between them. They get together, decide what mega will run, make it look good for the masses. Bit of competition here, a bit of warfare there. That's all show. They're vertically integrated mega corporations that run entire sections of the economy. Because they're all signed up to a plan. Well, we're the anti-plan. We're the ninth mega. Because someone got to take care of crime, right? That's us, the mega of crime. Another interview by uh, Glo uh, Red Glorax of the Scopes Galactic Hour. Unfortunately, the Kerman didn't have too much of an interesting flavor text, so we'll move on. Garistas. The amalgamation of the two Kaldari words meaning naughty people. And indeed, they were. Murder, trafficking, corporate espionage. Nothing aggressive powered by an eye yet. So, there we have it, guys. Um, that's a little like dive into the history of like what the Garistas were, what they could potentially be up to. Um, but yeah, before we, like, we close this out, I just want to, like, start, like, a little discussion. A bit of speculation on my part. It's always the best th thing I like about, like, this lore, you know? Just, like, the, what could potentially be going on. I found it curious as to why the Blood Raiders were so interested or liked the Gristers. My thinking was, um, Gristers are known, potentially, for taking on the occasional trafficking job. And the way that they hate that Mar, I find also kind of weird. So I'm thinking that maybe, hear me out, let's get your tinfoil already, that the Garistas supply the Blood Raiders um, a Mars for their like weird blood rituals. That's just what I'm thinking. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, maybe you can tell me I'm totally like a crazy. But I was also thinking about the relationship between Garistas and Sanja. And I was thinking, man, it's very weird that with the relationship that Fatal and the Rabbit had, after being pod killed, that you just exile him like that. So my thinking is that um, Fatal is with Sanja, and they're working on a, some form of technology to reverse effects of him dying in a, what's called, a low-grade pod, maybe. Because, I mean, they do have that interesting tech, you know, the slave tech, and um, all that crazy um, technology that's not as, like, you know, as good as, like, Jove tech, but still pretty damn impressive. So this is sort of what I was thinking. But, um, yeah, I'm also, I also know people are going to probably give me, um, a shit <laughs> for how I pronounce Gila, but I, I don't care, man. Um, uh, yeah, come at me. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If I got any of my facts wrong, feel free to put them in the, uh, below. There's some uh, of the history and stuff that I glossed over as well, so I didn't get everything in here. But I figured, like, the main points I got in, um, if you also disagree with that, feel free to comment. But, um, uh, yeah, that'll do it, guys. Um, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, evening, and regional equivalent, and I do hope to catch you in the next one. I do want to do more of this kind of content. Um, I think we'll start, we'll do, like, the pirate factions first, and then we'll get on to, like, the, like, more entities, like, the Mimitar and 
Kotari and Amar. But yeah, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time and uh, take care, guys.